Hello everyone, I'm John with JP Strategic Investments and today I'm going to go over Uber's Q3 earnings report that we got today and there's a lot of stuff to get into so let's dive right in. So first of all, let's just go over the general numbers. So Uber did 3.13 billion in revenue versus 3.2 billion expected and they had a loss of 62 cents per share versus an expected loss of 65 cents per share. So basically they had a slight miss on revenue and a slight beat on EPS, which honestly I would always say is better than beating on revenue and missing on EPS. If you beat on revenue and you miss on EPS, then you had a lower profit margin than expected. But if like Uber here, you beat on EPS with a miss on revenue, then you had a higher profit margin than expected, which could be good going forward. So to dive a little deeper here into these earnings, let's take a look at gross bookings. So gross bookings is the total amount of money users paid by segment. So we can see that gross bookings for mobility, or what Uber used to call rides, was down 50% year over year, and delivery, which is now what Uber calls their eat segment now that they've combined it with grocery delivery and package delivery, that was up 135% year over year. Now, the ride segment is actually not too bad, down 50%, considering the current situation we're in. Uber CEO Dara did also mention on the earnings call that this metric is very highly correlated to restrictions by state and country. So in states and countries that have loosened restrictions and opened up a little more, Uber's mobility in those countries is as high as 80 to 90% of what it was pre-COVID. Now, one thing we do have to take into account here is several countries have been adding more restrictions in October as COVID cases rise, and Dara did touch on this, and it's definitely dampening Uber's guidance going forward. As far as their delivery business goes, though, obviously we're seeing some huge growth with gross bookings up 135%. Now, there are a few things here that are very promising. First of all, in Q2 of this year, Uber only had about 6.9 billion in delivery gross bookings, compared to roughly 8.5 billion they had in this quarter. That means their delivery segment is continuing to grow quarter over quarter, even as lockdowns and restrictions are lifted. Many investors were worried initially that COVID restrictions being lifted would cause Uber's delivery business to decline because most people were ordering Uber Eats and things like that when they were stuck in lockdowns. Obviously though, that isn't the case because Uber's delivery business was able to grow 20% quarter over quarter. Now, another promising point about Uber's delivery business brings up their EBITDA, or earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Now, Uber's delivery segment has been getting more and more profitable every quarter, and it did not disappoint this quarter either. Uber only had a loss in their delivery segment of about $183 million. Now, let me explain why this is so impressive. So last quarter, Uber made about $1.2 billion in revenue from their delivery segment, which resulted in a loss of roughly $232 million. This quarter, though, they did over $1.4 billion in revenue, which only resulted in a loss of $183 million. Considering that most of their costs are variable, being able to lose less money on a higher revenue implies a huge increase in efficiency and the ability to achieve economies of scale. One more thing that Dara specifically mentioned on the earnings call about Uber Eats is that it has a huge amount of room to grow. He mentioned that in many of their markets, they have only signed on about 10 to 20% of the local restaurants in the area. This means they have a lot of room to expand even in the markets that they currently operate. Also on the topic of the restaurants, Uber has also now completely integrated ads into the Uber Eats app, which allows restaurants to run ads on the app, and Uber expects this to be a very high margin segment of their delivery business going forward. Their mobility or rides business has also become more and more profitable since the pandemic started, and Dara mentioned on the earnings call that they are now able to achieve the same profit margin on their mobility business as they would have with 10 to 20% lower volumes than before showing again how great Uber is at improving their efficiencies. One last thing that stood out on the earnings call was that Dara mentioned that they are seeing a broader use of their mobility segment in regards to time of day and even days of the week. He implied that this could mean that people are finding other uses for Uber and broaden their total addressable market while also increasing the amount of rides per user. I think this is very interesting because it could also be a result of Uber adding other rides options like their hourly rates and subscription options that they added earlier this year. But we'll have to wait and see exactly how this plays out in the coming quarters. As far as how the stock has reacted to these earnings, it was a bit sporadic in the beginning, but it's kind of leveled out down around 2% after hours. This isn't necessarily surprising to me as in my opinion, the move after Prop 22 passed put the stock at its pre-COVID highs, 
which I would say is a bit generous considering we're seeing the possibility of higher COVID cases and potentially more lockdowns. If you guys are in our Discord server, you already know this. I sent out a trade notification saying that we did sell half of our already small Uber position earlier today, as we thought that it was unlikely that even with good earnings, the stock would be pushed higher. If you want access to this Discord server and trade notifications from us, the invite link is in the description to all of our videos, so definitely jump in there. Other than that, that's pretty much it for our analysis of Uber's earnings. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and have a great day.